Good morning, everybody. My name's Jason Fox. I'm the uh, um, Senior Technical Evangelist at the Fireware Foundation, and we're covering some new uh, endpoints in uh, uh, NGSI LD, uh, particularly concise payloads and merge patch operations. So let's go into more detail as to what we're actually going to be uh, covering today. Um, there are already uh, um, lots of different payloads you can get out through the NGSI uh, API, and we're going to uh, review the existing normalized and simplified uh, 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 payloads, as well as introducing this new uh, uh, concise payload. The aim here is to uh, offer developers stuff which they find more usable, more useful, stuff which can, stuff which can be... Uh, um, uh, um, make it easier to get data into and out of a, a context broker. Uh, furthermore, uh, we will cover uh, a variety of uh, uh, new uh, um, HTTP methods which are uh, supported in Orion LD. And this is a case where a context broker has got experimental features, new features, which are being driven by customer demand. People want to actually use this stuff. Uh, but there's no point uh, in adding stuff into your context broker if it can't be somehow added into the standard. So I'll, I'll, I'll also uh, explain why these new endpoints are, uh, are likely to get into the uh, um, Etsy standard. Obviously, that's a, uh, a consensus process. Um, and uh, why this is the sort of thing which will, uh, when you're looking at new features, you can see, okay, this is likely to be uh, um, supported by uh, other members of the uh, Etsy committee. Because um, if you can do stuff which is um, following various basic rules, it's much more likely to be acceptable to the uh, um, uh, wide, wide variety of context brokers and eventually will be pushed into uh, other context brokers. There are functions already in uh, Orion LD which are uh, custom. If you just look at the versions endpoint, that's not in the, uh, um, uh, in the specification. If you look at the uh, backwards compatibility to NGSI uh, v2, that again is not in the uh, uh, specification. But um, those are not something which is likely to be pushed back into uh, uh, the uh, specification itself. It's uh, things which are going to be of obvious common use. And a payload, obviously, if a payload is only supported by a, uh, a minority of brokers, that's not very useful. So uh, it needs to be uh, pushed into uh, the uh, actual uh, uh, real live uh, specification so that all brokers eventually will follow suit. Now, uh, now um, on top of that, um, there's a, a, a new um, uh, patch operation, and we'll be doing a deep dive in uh, into the various different uh, patch operations, what the difference between a partial update is and a merge patch, and also the use of uh, um, JSON little nulls, uh, because JSON little nulls have been, uh, or nulls have been in the specification, but poorly supported, and now with JSON literal nulls, uh, it's uh, uh, much easier to actually get it to do what it wants. So uh, whilst you should realize that you know, all the functions I'm showing, going to be showing today are on uh, a, uh, um, a pre-release of the Orion uh, LD context broker, uh, these will be, or very, something very, 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 very close to these, will be arriving in other brokers assuming the uh, um, uh, Etsy specifications mandates that, yes, you must do uh, this particular sort of thing. Um, as you know, all NGSI LD payloads are JSON LD documents. The snippet you've got at the top is uh, taken from the uh, JSONLD.org uh, uh, website saying what JSON LD actually is. Uh, nothing specifically um, uh, fireware or uh, NGSI related. This is the the basic stuff. It's uh, the 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 basis is that a, uh, a JSON LD document is a JSON object. Fine, and it's got this little at context thingy. Now um, that gives you various um, uh, bits of vocabulary like the at ID uh, as well, J J JSON. But uh, within uh, NGSILD, you don't necessarily have to have the at context in the payload. You can also place it into a link header. Um, now, if you look at NGSI v2, um, which is not linked data based, 
you will find there is already an existing endpoint, which is slash entities, entity ID, actors, actor ID, slash value, where you can update a value of an attribute directly. Now, if you look at the uh, content type for this particular uh, operation, you'll find it's actually a plain text. It's ASCII. Uh, and uh, it just, you put in a value, seven. It comes through property uh, or uh, text or whatever the uh, you've called the uh, um, uh, attribute. The value is now seven. You could put in uh, the uh, a, a JSON object just as easily, but it would just be plain text for saying this is a push of this uh, particular value. Now, that cannot be done in NGSI LD because it is fundamental to the LD bit that every single payload is a JSON LD document. And this means that if you see a, a proposal in a context broker which does something which isn't a, a, a JSON LD document, it's going to be proprietary. It's not going to get, go across the board. But what is uh, NGSI LD? NGSI LD is um, the JSON payloads with additional structure rules and an associated API and subscriptions and registrations in it and everything else. It's not just let's add in some uh, uh, type equals property, type equals geo property and what have you. We use normalized form uh, by default. The normalized form, which is what most people are familiar with if you've been working with uh, NGSI LD, has got, uh, as, you, as I said, these type uh, and uh, uh, property type relationship uh, parts on it. And there are SARP attributes, which could also be part of the uh, uh, payload. Now, what I've, uh, I've put up here is the uh, normalized form, JSON, uh, NGSI LD normalized form of that uh, original uh, JSON uh, LD payload. And you can see, yeah, it's the same thing with a few uh, additional bits of structure added into it. However, you can also add in things like observed at, you know, when did this uh, um, attribute last change? Um, what is the uh, uh, the units of this uh, this uh, um, uh, element? Or you could have, you know, what's the precision of this uh, um, uh, value are we uh, is it reliable uh, stuff uh, like that which is you know properties of properties and uh, and so on and so forth um, now the important point here is that because uh, the normalized form has got all of the data which you've put in it is lossless it means that you can retrieve the whole uh, entity you can modify it and you can push it straight back in and it's got all of the information you need if you, however, go for the key value pairs option, you'll find it looks very, very much like the uh, original uh, JSON-LD uh, snippet. This is not surprising at all. This is the this is why NGSI-LD is the base, uh, has a uh, has JSON-LD as, as, it, as its basic basis. Now, at the moment, this is just a an output format. You put options key values at the end of your uh, uh, um, uh, string and it'll come out in a shortened form. Now, the, there are advantages of this. Obviously, it's a, uh, a much easier payload to look at. It's an easier pay payload to read. However, you do not get your sub attributes. You do not cannot tell whether this is a property or this is a relationship. And uh, in summary, it is lossy and it's not giving you all the information you need. Now, Potentially, even key values can become an input format in uh, NGSI LD 161 with this uh, uh, merge patch uh, functionality I'll be talking about later. And you'll see uh, how, how this trick uh, gets in so that it's no longer the case that you must always push normalized. Uh, furthermore, of course, it's not even just uh, your uh, attributes with properties and uh, uh, relationships. You can get out GeoJSON uh, uh, as a, uh, a format. You will get a, a geometry and the properties are uh, put into a, uh, another, another attribute. You can see that that's the key values version. And similarly, there is even a GeoJSON LD. All of the uh, um, uh, core terminology for GeoJSON LD is part of the NGSI LD uh, core context. So you can just say, OK, this is the uh, GeoJSON 
linked data format, which would have all the information. And again, you can see all the attributes are in there, all the type information is in there, all the sub attributes would be in there as well. So, concise payloads. The need for a concise payload is simply because um, not everyone wants to deal with the normalized form all the time. The normalized form is really, really useful when you are doing data exchange, which is the whole point about linked data. But it's, it's really uh, a little bit annoying when you're just trying to update a little value. You don't necessarily need to have all the information. Uh, it's also the case that, as I said, NGSILD is not just JSON-LD with type attributes. It needs to be uh, understood that there are multiple output formats, so why not multiple input formats? Um, whatever uh, makes it easier for um, developers to use. However, you need uh, they, because um, normalized is verbose. Uh, we could what we want to do is to remove the redundancy in the payloads, make it easier to uh, uh, um, push in information in there. But there are a lot of restrictions, so. Uh, yeah, as I said, um, every payload in, JSON -LD, uh, in NJSILD must be a JSON-LD document. Uh, it must be compatible. Obviously, we can't uh, uh, go, go around completely changing uh, the API. You want something which works for up input, output, uh, um, updating, uh, all the CRUD operations. And the fourth point, very important, is it must be lossless. We must have all of the information available. So. Trying to simplify uh, um, the existing normalized into an, uh, uh, or supplement it with an, a simpler format is the whole uh, whole idea here. So we want to be able to uh, um, eventually get to a, a position where we could get something like that put working in the system. So this is a property you'll recognize. It's a temperature property of 100. OK, well, we haven't got any sub attributes here, but um, let's have a look at that. What have you got information you've got there? It's got a value. Every property has got a value. OK, so why don't we uh, uh, infer from the fact that it's got a value that it's a property? That's going to be how concise works. Type becomes optional because value is in there. Well, what about if I just remove value altogether and I, I just get the, uh, the uh, temperature? Well, that is fine if there are no sub attributes present. You can say, OK, if it looks like key values form, then there's no uh, um, additional information in the uh, uh, payload. Temperature 100 is going to be a property with a value of temperature of 100. It's much uh, uh, shorter, but it is still lossless. Why? Because you can put your sub attributes in the uh, uh, temperature array. And we'll go through some examples. Uh, later on. Similarly, if you look at um, geo properties, geo properties are uh, um, again very similar. Uh, very similar. It's got a type and a value. So why can't we just put the value in uh, into uh, um, our uh, payload and then uh, it'll be be fine? However, we can go even further because. Every geo property must have a value which has got a geojson type. So you can see on the right, you've got a location type equals point. Uh, it then uh, becomes quite simple to see that this is how uh, this is always going to be a geo property. This is going to be geographic information. So it infer you can infer from the uh, um, payload that this is going to be a geo property if you've got more than just the uh, um, uh, simple uh, value if you've got uh, additional properties properties or uh, uh, relationships with properties fine yeah you can uh, uh, use the uh, leave value in there and keep going uh, with additional sub attributes so you can uh, with relationships is a little bit more tricky in that you can't have a super concise relationship if you say that a simple key value pair is a property you can't also say a, key, a simple key value pair is a relationship so the only supported concise version of a relationship, you can just remove the type. You just put the object uh, uh, in there, and it's uh, it, it's easily to it, easy to work out. Yeah, something which has just got object in it will be a relationship. So it can uh, um, expand as necessary.
Finally, uh, obviously, the newest uh, area in the uh, um, uh, um, specification is uh, language maps. You can see a language map, obviously, has got a type of language property, uh, and it's got a language map attribute. You can see it's got Constantinople, Constantinopolis, Istanbul, uh, as various names for the city. Um, but you could uh, just, again, remove the uh, um, uh, type attribute and you just get language property. This is obviously simpler. Now, language properties have got a dual nature. Um, you can actually request uh, language properties back out as uh, properties. So you can see an example here where we've just got the uh, uh, English language property and you've now started getting a sub attribute. It says it appears to be a value, therefore it appears to be a property. And it's got this sub attribute called Lang saying, yes, I am the name in English as opposed to uh, Greek or uh, Turkish. The new payloads, and we're going to uh, um, uh, go for a, 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 a short demo, are supported for all the cr necessary CRUD uh, um, uh, endpoints. So you've got, uh, if you want to get an attribute, well, as you know, when you get, uh, get entities, you can do the Q parameter, you can put uh, question mark options concise, it will come back in the, the uh, most compact version of concise it can find. Um, similarly, you can uh, up, uh, add entities using uh, post, or you can uh, get a specific entity, do the various uh, uh, patches and necessary, and all the relevant batch endpoints. Um, I'll just start actually, I'll show this first. Right, so this is the uh, um, version I'm, I'm currently running up. Uh, and you can see uh, I'm running a pre-release version of uh, uh, Orion, Orion 1.1 1 1 pre-release. And also, the other important point is that when you're using these new endpoints, you need the minus experimental uh, um uh, entry on the command, the flag on the command. This is also uh, showing off uh, the forwarding because forwarding is uh, another thing which is to be uh, uh, clarified in uh, the 1611 release. So it's saying, I'm currently offering my experimental endpoints. I'm currently offering my uh, um, uh, for, uh, forwarding endpoint. Uh, so if I'm running a context bro broker, I believe I am. I'll just check that I'm running something. Yep, yeah, looks like I'm running something. Um, so if I create a new entity, I can create an entity using this sort of format. You can see it's shorter. It's, this is all the uh, um, uh, operations. Um, you can see category value, temperature value and unit code. Location, you can see type, type and coordinates. So I can just send that. And you can see status created. Similarly, I can also add new uh, attributes. This is using the uh, Atters endpoint. And I'm saying, okay, I've got a battery and it's got a value and it's got a unit code. Unit code C621, which is uh, uh, Unity, zero to one. Um, and I've got a uh, relationship. This is a relationship, it's an object. Send that. And I can then read back my uh, uh, data in say normalized form so i've got my uh, temperature sensor here and you can see if i scroll back up it's got all the necessary bits which were missing from my original request it's got the fact that this is a property it's got the fact that this is a relationship it's got the, uh, um, the fact that this is a uh, geo property just added in so you can see this can be very useful for uh, our uh, um, update uh, um, operations uh, because you know you just don't need don't need to bother anymore. Um, you can obviously do the usual uh, uh, attributes on those uh, parameters on the uh, URL. So if I just want the temporary attribute and I want it in concise format. These are the uh, two attributes I, I, I would have, and I send that. And you can see, okay, I am just getting my temperature and I'm getting it in concise form. Um, if I just wanted to get its key values. You can see I'm now missing all the uh, um, uh, um, metadata information. I've no longer got the fact that uh, the battery level is going from zero to one or the temperature is in, uh, in, 
uh, uh, Celsius. You can uh, obviously use the uh, uh, listing, uh, but you can also do this for the uh, geojacent system. So uh, if I um, want to get a specific animal, let's say, for my, uh, um, for my, for my farm, it's a feature collection. And you can see because it's uh, um, uh, because the uh, I've got options concise, I've got back various bits of information about my uh, my cattle, as you uh, as as you'd expect. And that is basically what uh, um, uh, concise payloads are, uh, are are all about. It's ma it's making things um, simpler. Now. On top of that, there are some new uh, operations in uh, Orion LD. Again, some of these will be uh, standardized into uh, uh, NGSI uh, um, 1 6. Uh, as you uh, uh, probably realize, there are eight standard uh, um, HTTP methods, uh, of which seven are usually uh, um, reasonably supported. Trace is Defined, but very few people ever uh, ever uh, use it. Um, they all have um, semantic meaning. So uh, a get is should always be a retrieve from the server. Um, a post should be uh, send data to create or update a resource. This is the reason why the batch endpoints are post uh, because it is to create or update. Um, delete obviously is delete. Patch is an interesting one because that's what we're going to go into more detail. It's apply partial modifications. It is contrasted with a put, which is an overwrite. Now, there are is already an overwrite uh, um, mechanism uh, for batch entities, but the, there's no specific one for uh, individual entities until uh, this gets, uh, uh, gets approved. Um, and then the next one, which is of interest, is um, options. Options is um, just asking, well, what can I do here? What is available? And this is quite useful because it means you can uh, uh, try before you buy. You can actually say, OK, are you able to do this uh, um, uh, patch inf uh, information or whatever? Uh, this is the um, properties of HTTP uh, P methods, standard way of doing things. So when, as a developer, you come up with a post, you would expect that there should be a body in the request. You would expect that there should be uh, a, uh, um, a potential response body. Uh, you know that it shouldn't be safe. If it's, if, if it's not safe, it means that if you do it uh, multiple times, it will do multiple operate, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, that's item, the um, item potent, multiple times, multiple operation. Uh, uh, and uh, safe means it, it's, uh, it's, it, it's actually doing an operation on the uh, server, get that right way around. Cacheable um, is obviously if I get a, uh, a, an update and I've done something, it needs to, uh, uh, it reckons, yeah, I could potentially use that again. Several of these uh, um, uh, endpoints have been uh, a little asterisk ne next to them because, um, because of the distributed nature of uh, um, context brokers. Is uh, the post element really cacheable? Because potentially you could be forwarding to another uh, um, system which could be loading in uh, data as well. Maybe they've got information about that uh, attribute you haven't. So it's kind of 90% you know, of the way there. Um, for the get uh, uh, request and the delete request, according to uh, um, the uh, IETF uh, um, uh, RFC, uh, a request body is optional. Within context brokers, uh, you are not allowed to put in a, a request. Optional is actually an X, so that's why those have got a question mark. There's a little bit on put, which I can uh, uh, come back later. And again, um, are, are, are gets cacheable? Yes, uh, gets should be cacheable, but you won't obviously be getting the uh, uh, latest information. And indeed, if you are um, relying on a re registration, you don't know if the, one of your uh, um, sources downstream, context sources downstream, has been uh, uh, updated. There are this is this is uh, well defined by the uh, uh, IETF. You can read these uh, um, uh, definitions online. This is what developers expect. So if you've got the uh, um, uh, if you're going to use uh, um, 
a, an HTTP method, you, you should uh, uh, use the, the right one. The, the top four are already uh, used throughout brokers. Uh, the bottom four are not currently in, uh, uh, available in uh, the 151 specification. Uh, and uh, as I said, trace is basically useless. Uh, but uh, um, you'll see how uh, uh, um, things have uh, potentially changed. Current methods in all brokers, you can do get and post on entities. I'm just talking about entities because uh, the new uh, endpoints are, are entity uh, specific, but you can uh, um, also do you know, get delete, get post patch delete uh, and uh, uh, delete and patch. You can see that there are already existing endpoints. You know these things already. That's not particularly interesting. What is of more interest is that the additional uh, endpoints that uh, additional methods sorry that uh, uh, Orion LD uh, is now able to service it's got uh, full uh, um, uh, operational options on all endpoints you can ask what can I do here and it will tell you on entities you can do get and post on uh, on an individual entity you can do get delete patch and put and you can see patch and put are new because they're not currently Available there. I'll sh show you what these mean, uh, mean mean in a second. And obviously the other um, endpoints are as necessary. And there is one new endpoint because there is uh, because there is a new patch merge patch operation. There is also a new batch version of that merge patch operation, which obviously is hidden under a uh, uh, entity operations post uh, endpoint. So what does options do? Options is not something which. Uh, is mandated by uh, Etsy for the uh, NGS ILD specification. It's just good practice for uh, a uh, um, HTTP uh, web service. So this is the reason why Orion LD is, uh, is put in it. Uh, as I said, it's available on all endpoints and it returns um, uh, an accept patch and uh, uh, allow and various other bits of information. Now, you may have come across uh, um, uh, options if you are trying to implement cores, uh, so cr cr cross origin stuff. Um, it, uh, Orion LD does not directly offer cores pre flight support. It's not uh, um, uh, something which is directly required by context brokers. You can uh, put in cores if you want to, but you'd have to put a, uh, um, a proxy like, say, Nginx uh, in front of your context broker to actually uh, uh, deal with it. But what it does is it does give you sufficient information to say what is available here. Now, there is uh, a new patch endpoint for merge patch as opposed to partial update patch. and uh, the way that um, Orion LD uh, indicates this is that for merge patch only, it says um, it will return, OK, um, I accept merge patch operations. Now, again, if you look at the uh, merge patch uh, um, RFC from uh, IETF, it's ex accept application slash merge dash patch plus JSON. So that's what the, how, how it's defined. I'll show you later in a, uh, a uh, little, no, I'll show the demo now. So if I'm looking at en the entities endpoint, send the request and you get nothing back in the body because options is all about headers. And you can see it's just got get, post, and options. There's no patch in there, therefore it's not telling me what patch endpoints are available. If I go for um, the existing atters attribute uh, endpoint, I send that. It says I do accept patch on this endpoint, and I'm accepting delete patch and options, and I'm accepting application, application JSON and application LD plus JSON. In other words, whether you put the uh, at context in the body or in the link header. The new endpoint is under an individual entity. The new merge is under an individual entity. And, and the head is here. It says, yeah, I now accept get put, which means I can now overwrite an entire entity, delete patch and options, but I now accept three different uh, types of patch, application JSON, 
application LD plus JSON and application merge patch plus JSON. So all of these are uh, available and you can uh, um, tell that you know this is running with a an Orion LD which is capable of doing this. Obviously if you've got uh, version one or earlier it's not going to be there. You need to be using this uh, um, uh, pre-release at the moment. Uh, I briefly mentioned there were a couple of put operations. Yes, so put is 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 fairly boring. Um, you are just replacing an entire uh, en 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 entity. Um, so you put in uh, the the data of an entity. I've got an ID. Uh, I want to replace the entire wipe it out, but the entirety of the uh, entity in there as well, or an entire uh, attribute. And it supports both normalized and uh, and concise. Now there is one tiny. This is the reason for the asterisk earlier. There's one tiny inverted commas misuse of this HTTP verb because the modified at system attribute is always updated. So put is usually defined as being uh, an idempotent change. In other words, uh, um, you can do it multiple times and it won't change anything. Well, yeah, it doesn't change anything apart from this system, one system attribute. The created at uh, system attribute it remains unchanged. And of course, there already exists a, uh, a batch equivalent for uh, for this, which is the uh, update options overwrite. So this is not new functionality; it's just new functionality onto an individual uh, entity, and in this case, uh, an individual attribute. There is one new patch endpoint. Uh, this is this merge patch. Merge patch rather than the existing partial update patch, and we'll go into more details as to as to what the, the what these are uh, in the next uh, uh, stage. Um, the, uh, the merge patch supports normalized, concise, and key values. So this new uh, concise version is there as an input on all endpoints, but particularly for merge patch then it is possible to put a key values payload, and we'll, uh, uh, I'll explain the details in a second. Um, it supports the update uh, of a common observed at. So if you uh, uh, want to do a merge patch and say, okay, all of the information I'm pushing into your system was at this particular timestamp, you can put observed at uh, and a uh, ISO date on your uh, um, uh, as a parameter, and it will say, "Yeah, I update the values." And it also supports uh, language maps as a property. Again, I'll, I'll look in the uh, the details uh, in a second. So, patch operations. A little bit more detail on patch. If you have this entity, this temperature sensor, and it's got a unit code, and it's got a value, and it's going to observe that, and you do a Put in the uh, a, an observed at uh, put in a the normalized payload on the on the right. You will see that the unit code is removed because this is a partial update. It means that the information held for each attribute, which indirectly is the information which is used for your temporal operations, is safe. It means that okay, if I fail to change the observed at because I failed to put it into the payload. I will. It will just be deleted, and it won't uh, form a a a, a temporal value. But the uh, what it means is it's a it's a replacement at an attribute level. If I do the same thing, um, uh, sorry, a, 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 a attribute level. If I don't do the same thing within the attribute itself, this time instead of having the payload with temperature. And type it's just type value uh, observed that you can see it is a replace at the sub attribute level now because this is a patch it's a partial update at the per partial uh, if I'm doing it at the atters the lower level it means that the unit code will not be removed but obviously the uh, value will, uh, uh, will 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 uh, change in this case so in this case is the sub attributes which are replaced uh, with an atters and it's the uh, attributes which are changed if you have atters without the uh, uh, individual uh, attribute. This is uh, so far how patch always works. Merge patch is new. Merge patch is like a uh, uh, a forensic knife. If you put in a payload with 
a type and a value, or just a value, if it's going to be a, um, a concise format, you will just change that value. Uh, observe that will not be removed. Unit code will not be removed. Other attributes will not be changed. But merge patch is just, this is my payload. This is what I want to change. Merge it with the, uh, the, uh, the stuff I've got. Everything else is left alone. So you can see that I no longer need to uh, put in the uh, um, uh, unit code or whatever. Um, concise also works with uh, um, uh, this, this endpoint. So obviously you can see a normalized payload. I could say I want to change this value and only this value to uh, um, the uh, um, uh, to 100. It's whether you put in titles property or just value equals 100 or just even temperature colon 100, the value will be updated. Nothing else gets uh, gets changed. Uh, there is a, uh, a certain amount of key value support just for this uh, uh, endpoint. So um, as you know, key values has got the uh, just the uh, values of the uh, the uh, each, each each attribute. So if you put in options key values at the end of this, it says okay, don't change the uh, the type from uh, property or relationship or what have you. Just maintain update the value object. For the second attribute, you can see spouse has changed. Uh, it's a relationship. Uh, just update the object object value. Other attributes like you know the date he was born or uh, location or whatever is not changing. All sub attributes don't change. It's very forensic. It's very uh, uh, um, uh, focused as to where it's it's actually going. Language map support again will work um, uh, if you uh, have this have this language map and it's a property. You say I've got uh, Istanbul, Constantinople. Um, uh, if I normal, uh, if I get a normalized uh, output of a, of a language map as a property, it will look like a type, and it will have this extra lang thing in there. If I do it as key values, uh, and I get the get back the language uh, type, it will just look name Istanbul, name Constantinople, right? So uh, if I uh, put the necessary uh, uh, decoration of the uh, URL, it will just update the single uh, um, language that you that you supply. So in this particular case, um, it is perfectly possible to do key values for merge patch, also for uh, uh, language uh, properties. As I mentioned, observe that is fundamental to this uh, um, uh, NGSILD temporal operations. And if you just put in the, uh, a merge patch of any of these uh, things on screen at the moment, the observed that would not change. And that could result in having uh, effectively corrupt data in your system because you don't know that the uh, uh, timing of a, uh, a value has changed. So uh, if you use this particular endpoint, you've got to be careful and you've got to... Uh, um, if you want to maintain temporal data, you've got to add in this observe that. It will only update observe that where it already exists. So if you've got a name which doesn't have an observe that, and you've got, because you're using it for the Q parameter, uh, and you've got a temperature which does have this observe that, then it's a matter of just saying, OK, I'll just observe this one. Again, once again, other sub attributes are unaffected, other attributes unchanged, it's just the values you're putting in which get through to the patch. Right, before I move on to chasing little nulls, I'll just have a look. Yep, so I've got an entity. I can overwrite an entity. Uh, as I said, uh, if I am now put a put into my uh, in my system, I can say, okay, this is now my new uh, um, uh, put operation. I will just overwrite it completely. Absolutely no, no problem. I can read my uh, um, uh, my data from e each one. As you can see, I've already got uh, battery level and what have you. So, oops, that's what I want. We can end up updating the value the uh, value of a uh, um, temperature sensor and the uh, um, location of the sensor just by putting in this this patch, and this is a uh, a 
uh, a concise format to send that one. And if we don't just, just read it in normalized form, you can see that the temperature has now changed to 20 and the value has, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the location has, uh, uh, has uh, changed as well. Um, there is uh, an additional thing which we'll come into a minute with, uh, dealing with um, with uh, um, Jason uh, Jason null literals or Jason little nulls, um, where this particular syntax here, I'll show you, show you this in more detail in a second, so is basically a delete operation. So I've got battery level in my entity, I'll change it to 21. And if I now look at my uh, um, entity, I'll get it concise. You can see that battery level has now been deleted. Uh, you can also, uh, if you want to, with uh, a merge patch, you can add additional uh, information. So this is going to add a precision and it's going to attempt to delete uh, uncharged. And obviously it, do it doesn't exist, therefore uncharged won't be there. But if I now look at my uh, uh, entity, I'll look at it normalized this time for a change. Uh, you can see that I've now got my sub attribute has been put in there. And you can see that the uh, entity has been updated. Okay, JSON literal nulls. Um, the if you look read the uh, um, Etsy specification null on patch endpoints has been uh, uh, in there since I think 1.2 uh, or even 1.1 I think it's always been in there. However, uh, it's been poorly supported. Uh, the reason being that um, uh, JSON LD 1.0 doesn't support nulls, so uh, there needs to be a uh, a mechanism for putting it in. This is how a uh, a, a uh, JSON literal null appears. So according to the JSON LD 1.1 specification, generally when a, a, a JSON LD encounters a null, the ent ent entry is removed. So if you have something like the payload below, it's as if that payload doesn't include a precision. That is uh, just random. It's, it's, it's just updating uh, um, uh, type and value. Uh, but uh, it, with JSON LD 1.1, uh, there is a, uh, a it, uh, pointed out that null is a valid JSON token. So if you encode a uh, uh, entity, uh, a uh, value as a JSON literal, which is this type at JSON va at value equals something, then it is parsable by uh, uh, context brokers. It is recognizable as a null. And that is a delete. A delete which should work on both the partial update endpoint and the other uh, new merge endpoint, which I, uh, I show, showed earlier. Trying to set the value to a null, or uh, trying to set a uh, um, observe that to a null, or a, uh, a unit code to a null, or something like that, that will be a bad request because a null means unknown. And context brokers are there to tell you what they know about, not what they don't know about. So don't go around trying to set values to null, but you can use this null to uh, uh, delete ent entities. So um, in summary, um, NGIS ILD specification builds on all these other standards. You've got the JSON LD standard, that's from W3C. You've got IETF RFCs, there's a list of numbers there. You've got the ISO date, you've got the UNC FAT codes, you've got GeoJSON. These are other standards, there's no point in making it up as you go along. Typically, if you're uh, going to find a new uh, functionality in uh, a context broker, it's going to follow existing uh, standards because they don't surprise the developer. Uh, it's a matter of saying, you know, our payloads are JSON LD payloads. We use HTT uh, uh, ver standard standard verbs for HTTP uh, operations or uh, um, we know the difference between a put, a put and a post. Um, however, that being said, context brokers do deviate from the standard. Uh, and in this is a case of uh, saying that if there's stuff which the deviation could be useful uh, to be pushed into the standard, then it's brought before the Etsy committee to decide using consensus, working out whether this is worth worthwhile or not. And uh, as, as you were 
uh, we'll see these uh, um, uh, proposals have been proposed by the Fireware Foundation. Uh, within Context Broker, Orion LD 1.1 adds in this new concise payload, which has been uh, uh, um, proposed uh, uh, to the Etsy uh, standard, and also adds in several new operations, patch operations, put operations, options. Um, and it's very much a focused pack, uh, a merge patch, focused packs patch, rather than the partial update, which is more of an overwrite at the attribute level. And uh, it's perfectly possible to do the uh, all of this information uh, using JSON literal nulls to get rid of uh, uh, values as well. Here are a uh, set of uh, useful links. There is a uh, tutorial available uh, which uh, uses uh, this uh, concise format. There's not one on merge patch yet. Um, and the Orion LD 1.1 stable release is due in June 2022. At the moment, uh, like you saw in my uh, um, uh, Docker file, I'm using a pre-release. Uh, obviously, if you're living dangerously, you could use latest, but uh, it's better to uh, 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 pin to a, uh, a uh, fixed version of your, your system. And you can go away and, and, and play with this. This is uh, obviously... Um, relatively stable um obviously it, it uh, there are uh, bug fixes uh, uh, going on and you can retrieve the pre-releases from uh, docker hub using the uh, uh, url which is on, on on screen if you want to find out what's coming up in uh, orion ld then you can just look at the uh, uh, the, the roadmap which is also on, on on github you can do the same thing with etsy uh, etsy have got uh, an open document area and there are uh, two documents of interest. Of interest. One, the, the draft for public comment of uh, the, uh, the uh, includes uh, base proposals for uh, concise and merge. Uh, and there's also a roadmap for uh, NGS ILD 161, which I believe is due uh, around September, um, which should uh, say what else is coming into the system. And that is it for today. So um, I hope that uh, uh, you will uh, understand that this will make uh, context brokers much more usable and uh, um, go away and, uh, and play with your new endpoints. Thank you very much.